All right, guys, Papa Pepper here once again. More of 50 days to understanding the end times more accurately. Today we're on day 36 again. This is just what I've reasoned to be true based on scripture. Um, you know, search the scriptures daily for yourself. Don't believe it just because I said it, but test these things. See what, uh, what God really has to say about these things. So day 36, Two Witnesses, Part 1. A principle that we see laid forth in scripture is the importance of establishing a matter by the mouth of two or three witnesses. At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses shall he that is worthy of death be put to death. But at the mouth of one witness he shall not be put to death. Deuteronomy chapter 17 uh, verse 6. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or any sin in any sin that he sinneth at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15. This is the third time I'm coming to you. In the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 1. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 19. One thing to remember when applying this principle is that this preventative measure was instituted to get the truth out of a matter when dealing with fallible humans. Since people can lie, be wrong, or be deceived, this safeguard was instituted by God to ensure that honesty and justice would prevail. Though establishing a matter by the mouth of two or three witnesses is important when dealing with mankind, it is not necessary when dealing with God. For his word is truth, and he cannot lie. However, as an example to us, God often repeats himself in the Bible, and, can, and frequently has different books verifying the same claim or giving the same message. I believe that this is why we have four Gospels. Though two or three witnesses are only required when dealing with man, and though God is infallible, yet he still gave us four witnesses in the Gospels. Though one single verse in the Bible can stand alone, as long as the interpretation of it is not in conflict with any other scripture, finding multiple verses that state the same thing can give us confidence that we are reasoning accurately. I believe that this is one area where the reasoning on eschatology presented in this book is much stronger than the pre-tribulational view. When we use phrases that God uses in ways that he uses them and find multiple verses that actually say something tangible, it is easier to see what God is trying to reveal. As an opportunity to review what we have covered thus far in light of this multiple witness principle, I will share some of the verses cited already. These things I have spoken unto you, that you may have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. John chapter 16, verse 33. Confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. These two witnesses confirm that believers will have tribulation in the world. Point number one, confirming a matter by two or three witnesses is important when dealing with people. Point number two, we do not need to apply this principle when dealing with God, but we can. Point number three, two witnesses confirm that believers will have tribulation on the earth. So the next couple days are going to be just a recap, applying this principle to some things I've already shared, a chance for us to kind of review some things, but also once again to hear the, the repeated testimony of what God is revealing in the Bible. So uh, again, just be patient with me as I head through this. See what you think for yourself, and uh, join me back again tomorrow. Pop out.